thank you very much for joining me. This is Zainab Kessler, Saturday Extravaganza. Today I'm going to cover this amazing chipboard binder by Basically Bear. Um, I'm going to cover it with fabric and have all kinds of fun stuff on it. So this is a very thin kind of um, basic white fabric. I have no idea what, what it's called, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, you can basically use whatever fabric you want. Uh, the technique will be the same. So what I'm going to do is uh, cut the fabric and leave about an inch and a half um, around the binder. The best thing to do is to fold it around the binder so you won't uh, miss to you won't miss any fabric and uh, this way you'll have enough. Uh, what else, another thing that is very recommended is using fabric adhesive. Uh, this will make sure that it will stick really really well and it will be very very strong and without any bubbles or any areas that will later lift. So what I'm doing is I'm using fabric adhesive. I started with the spine first, placed it in the middle, glued it on the fabric, and now I'm doing uh, one side and then I'm going to do the other side. And basically what we're doing is a covering technique which would you would use if you want to wrap a book or a notebook for school or something like that. Just the same as you would do with paper. So this is one side just make sure to stretch the fabric so it will be nice and and uh, stretched on the binder now the for the other side what I love about this binder is that it's really uh, thick so it can hold a lot of pages inside and what I'm doing is I'm doing a resolution resolutions binder and uh, I want to put all my resolutions in and, and I hope that will inspire me to actually follow my resolution and actually doing them, which is another story. So now the outer part is covered. I'm going to trim a little bit because uh, it's too wide. I'm going to leave only about an inch around. Uh, now you have to cut the corners. Now when you cover corners, if you want them to look very professional, it's the same with paper. When you cut the corner, don't cut it all the way to the binder. Leave about an uh, eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch uh, margin. This way when you do the folding on the corner with your paper or fabric in this case it will really look a very nice you will have a very nice corner and it will look very professional now for the set for the binder area what we're going to do we're going to go in and we're going to cut into the fabric like I'm doing right now and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to have a smaller piece there that will only go up to the binder and not all the way and cover it the 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 binding mechanism. So now what I'm doing is putting some glue and put gluing the fabric. The really good thing about covering a binder or a mini album with fabric is fabric is very flexible. Uh, sometimes with paper we're having a bit of a hard time because it's too thick and it sometimes tears but you don't have these problems with fabric because this is was this is what fabric supposed to do to cover well to cover everything from pillows to furniture to our bodies so this this is a very good way of creating a really cool cover that will also last you a long time i really like this so this is what we're doing with the corner you see just put your fabric a little bit to the inside and then glue it and this gives you a really nice corner if you need to fold it a little bit 
more inside then just do it like I'm doing it right now. So this is one side and now we're going to do the other side and for this area you see because we cut it with the scissors before it just reach just reaches up to the binding mechanism and it doesn't cover it. It needs to be uh, not covered because it can interfere with its um, closing, opening, etc. So, isn't it fun, you guys? I really like working with fabric. Fabric is really so much fun. Sometimes people say, what? But we're paper crafters and fabric, you know, scares us. So don't be afraid. It's really cool material and you should try it at least once. It's fun. Trust me. So, now we're finishing with the covering of the entire binder. Uh, for the inside, to cover all this not very nice look on the inside, I'm going to use paper. I'm using uh, Bow Bunny's uh, paper. This is kind of an old collection, but I really, really, really like it. So, I keep on using it. I have so many uh, papers from this collection, and I don't care that it's old. I'm just going to use it because I like it. So I'm going to do this. Um, I think this is from the Gabrielle collection. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I took one piece and I cut it so I'll have two colors. It's the same page, only on different sides. It's a double-sided uh, pattern paper cardstock. So I'm using a small strip from one side of the paper and a big, bigger portion from the other side. Now for this I'm using just uh, tacky glue because we are adhering paper. So that would be best to use uh, just paper uh, or crafting glue or paper glue. Uh, make sure you burnish it really well with your bone folder so you won't have any bubbles and the folding uh, parts of the binder will also be uh, covered properly without any bubbles. So the same thing on the other side. One piece from one side of the paper, one pattern, and another piece with the other side of the paper, which is a different pattern. This makes it a little bit more interesting, right? You can of course use just a uniform uh, cardstock with the same patterns if you don't like this option. But I really like it. What do you think, you guys? Makes sense? I think it makes sense. Makes it a bit more fun and interesting, not too boring. Of course, I'm distressing the edges because I always do that. Gives it more dimension and a little bit nicer. So now for the outside, I'm going to spray. This is so much fun because fabrics really fabric like spraying. It absorbs it really well and it gives it a very nice look. Of course you can also dye your fabric before you cover the binder or use a fabric with a pattern, flowers or whatever. I'm just spraying um, the fabric different colors. You might need to do it a few times because fabric absorbs the color a bit more and when it's dry it looks a bit bland. So after you spray it once, you dry it, you see if you like the result and then you spray it again. I'm actually doing it, um, I did one side first, dried it with my heat tool and then I'm doing the other side because I don't want it to smear because it does take a little bit longer to dry because the fabric absorbs much more liquid and it needs much more liquid to get a very nice paint. So like I said before, if you need to add spray more and dry it, then dry it. Just make sure at the end it's completely dry. Now I'm using some modeling paste. I sprayed it a little bit with the same spray that I used on my binder to just give it a so it won't be completely white. It's not 
the color is very, very, very um, soft and not very visible, but it's not white. So this is what I wanted. So what I'm doing with this is a really nice stencil by um, Crafters Workshop. And I'm just going over with my modeling paste on the pattern that I want on the front of my cover. A little bit of swirls. I need a lot of inspiration for this uh, mini album or binder because if I'm going to follow through with all my resolutions, I really need a really big boost of inspiration to do that. <laughs> so it must be with all the things I love. The colors I love, see, I spray some more color with my modeling paste, mixing it up. So I have first batch of modeling paste. So anyways, I was saying I have to have all the things that I love on the cover of this binder. So I will be drawn to it and I will be motivated to actually follow all my resolutions. So now I'm drying my modeling paste and adding a little bit more swirls. If you don't like swirls, you can do stars, you can do squares, you can do hearts or flowers or whatever pattern that you like, whatever talks to you. I love swirls. I love the movement that they have, and the kind of a romantic, happy feeling that they have. So make sure everything is dry. Now for my uh, title, Resolutions. As you know, I always start from right to left. This way I can spell out my title and not run out of place by the fourth or fifth letter. So I'm just dressing the uh, edges of each, each letter sticker. These are Prima stickers. Um, and this is going to say resolutions. I'm using two colors because I ran out of I don't have enough letters from one color. So this way I'm using two colors and it's actually coming really nice. Much more interesting than just using one boring color. This way it's more colorful. So this is a nice tip for you if you uh, run out of something then you can always combine it with something else and it usually looks nicer than you thought it would. So this is the title, Resolutions, and now it's flower time. So I'm adding lots of flowers to my binder again so it will be nice and inviting for me to look into my resolutions and create resolutions pages to put in there. But today we're just working on the cover. So we'll be ready for the new year when the time comes. So I'm just adding flowers, teal and light blue and white. And some leaves, some blue leaves. And I'm bending the leaves a little bit so they have more dimension. So you just add on as many flowers as you want. And this way it will be nice and happy. So a little bit more flowers. And some more flowers. You can never have too many flowers. Some small ones. I'm actually using a mixture here of Prima and some flowers that I don't even remember where I got them, so I don't know their brand name. Sorry about that. But sometimes 
I get flowers by the bulk in a bag and they don't have even the brand name on them. It's just paper flowers and they're super fun so I don't care. I just use them. So now um, I'm gonna, this is um, Distress Ink, Liquid Distress Ink. I'm putting it on a uh, baby towel, baby wipe, sorry. And what I'm doing is I'm distressing the edges like I'm doing on paper, but this is a better way to do it on fabric because it dyes it a little bit better than just regular distressing because it's liquid. So I'm going over all the edges, giving it a nice frame, and a few drops of alcohol ink just to have a little bit more texture and interest on my page. So we have my binder, my cover. And now it's bling time because you have to have a little bling on your project. So I'm adding rhinestones uh, and crystals to the center of my flowers as well as using two colors, green and light blue, and I'm going to put some here. I'm using my knife to help me put them wherever I want them to be, because sometimes they are not so obedient. You have to help them stick to where you want. And now, um, I decided it's the background is too bland, so I'm going to use a little bit, uh, add some stamping with just uh, regular distress ink. This is uh, forest green, and uh, which one is it? Let me check. And faded jeans blue, and this is like just a Prima stamp with some letters on it, and you can see right away that it just pops. The, the binder and just gives it so much more interest and fun. Now I'm happy. So basically this is it. This is how it looks on the inside. And now I want to cover this binder and this because um, I don't really like how it looks. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this uh, lacy ribbon and I am just securing it with a little bit of glue and the glue it does not want to come out come out come out wherever you are okay now it's out so just tying it out on the outside and it will give it give it a nice look and a little bit more glue in here to secure it and this way the inside looks really nice and you don't see that it's cut there or it's not straight or whatever. You see it just covers the floor of the binding mechanisms and it looks really nice. So this is it and now I have to fill it with my resolutions and I have to follow them and I hope I'll do a good job with that. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope I've inspired you just a little tiny bit. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is just a closer look of everything. So thank you very much for joining me. And I hope I'll see you all next time. And I love you all. And thank you for your support. And see you next time. Bye.